it is finally here, the iPad, or the new iPad, or the iPad 3, whatever it is that you want to call it, it has finally arrived, and like every hot new gadget, we were very eager to get our greedy little hands on it as soon as humanly possible. Hi, I'm MJ with iFixit, and our fearless co-founder Luke Souls flew 17 hours into the future Australia, to attempt to be the very first human being on planet Earth to get his hands on the brand new iPad. Of course, this just means he got to fly to Australia, which is just great for him. I'm here in the office in California, not flying to Australia to buy the brand new iPad, not that I'm complaining. Anyways, we did secure a 4G LTE iPad, and I'm going to show you what we discovered inside this fancy new version. And thanks to the kind folks at MacFix at Australia, we have a legitimate facility to perform our teardown. So, what do we know about this new iPad? Structurally, the new iPad is pretty much the same as the previous generation. Just one millimeter thicker, a slightly more tapered rear panel, and a whopping 1.8 additional ounces is the grand total of the major exterior changes. So, in other words, unless you're looking really closely, you're going to have a difficult time telling the difference between the new iPad and the iPad 2. And you all can Wikipedia this for me, but even though the changes are minor, I'm pretty sure this is the first time in history that Apple has increased both the size and weight of one of its iOS devices, and I find that kind of interesting. But enough about the exterior. As they say, true beauty comes from within, so let's take a look at what the inside of the new iPad has to offer. With a liberal amount of heat, some strategically placed iFixit brand guitar picks, and the help of a plastic opening tool, we set to work removing the front panel. Those of you who have replaced the front panel on an iPad 2 will be familiar with just how tricky this is. But with a considerable amount of patience and some careful prying, the front panel lifted right off. Underneath the front panel is a familiar sight. Where, oh where, have I seen this before? Oh, that's right. It was a couple of weeks ago when we filmed our preview video of it. Like I said, all the way back then, this is the new iPad Retina display with crazy good 2048 by 1536 resolution and boasting a mind-boggling 3,145,728 pixels. Wow. <laughs> and even though that is really impressive, it only takes a few turns of the screwdriver to get that LCD up and out of the case. Using a handy spudger to disconnect the data display cable, we're able to confirm that this new Retina display will not work in your iPad 2. With incompatible connector sizes, it's just not going to happen, and I'm sure this is going to disappoint some people. Next up, connectors, 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 and a few more twists of the screwdriver frees up the logic board. A few EMI shields are not going to stand in our way from getting a look at the good stuff, and then suddenly, there she is, the new A5X system on a chip processor. The A5X chip has a new quad-core graphics processor, which Apple promises would deliver up to four times the graphics processing power, and surprisingly, a one gigahertz CPU, the same as the iPad 2. Outlined in yellow, you'll see the two 512 megabyte RAM modules totaling one gigabyte of RAM, which, if you're counting, is twice the RAM that's in the iPad 2. On to the battery, which, let's face it, makes up most of the iPad's mass. Adding 4G LTE capability could have been a total drain on the battery if Apple hadn't redesigned it. So kudos to them for maintaining one of the best features of the iPad, its impressive battery life. This new battery has been ramped up to the tune of 42 and a half watt hours, which is significant, especially when compared with the iPad 2's 25 watt hour battery. Aside from the A5X processor and the new beefy battery, probably the next most noticeable update is the new 5 megapixel HD iSight camera. With its five element lens, IR filter, auto exposure, and ability to shoot 1080p video, the new iPad camera has it all, though I'm still not sold on the idea of shooting anything with my iPad. But regardless, it is a huge step up, especially when compared to the iPad 2's paltry one megapixel rear camera. All things considered, I think it's more suiting to call this new iPad the iPad 2S, but I guess that'd just be too predictable. With the teardown behind us, we can get to the crux of the issue, just how repairable is this new iPad? While the new iPad's design is essentially the same as the iPad 2, which we gave a repairability score of 4, we've learned a lot about the design since then. We've spent the past year trying to repair the iPad 2 with mixed success, so we're awarding the new iPad a repairability score of 2, and retroactively downgrading the repairability score of the iPad 2 to a 2 as well, which I think is a first in iFixit history. 
The thing about it is that things that should be so easy, like replacing the battery, are a monumental task, and that's something I'll take a little more time to talk about in the near future. Big thanks to the amazing Luke Souls for braving this teardown all on his own in a foreign country, halfway across the globe, and for not inviting me to Australia with him. I didn't want to go anyway. If you want more details and high-resolution images of the teardown, you can see the new iPad teardown on ifixit.com. And for all the latest teardowns and repair videos, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at ifixit, or like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching, and happy repairing.